Hello everyone, Gareth the Master974 back again today doing a follow up Valve source code tutorial to one of the earlier tutorials I did, which is about the Half Life 2 beta sniper rifle and fixing up a scope bug that happened when if you'd go through a level transition you wouldn't be able to, you know, scope in the sniper rifle again. And this is a follow up that was actually inspired by a YouTube commenter by the name of Stong who recommended to look into a way to see if you could add a screen overlay of sorts when you zoomed in with the sniper rifle. So that's what I'm going to do today. And as a, an extension, I'm going to look into the binoculars as well, how to do a sort of similar fix for the binoculars, but that's got its own issue that I'm going to outline a little later. So for the sniper rifle scope overlay, uh, under the protected variables near the top of the file where, you know, it's like the header file class definition. You want to add in a color 32 and name it whatever you want. But in my case, I'm going to call it light red because the sniper scope looks like it's red in color. So I'm going to make the screen overlay, you know, like a light red color. And we're going to add this to the data desk and we're just going to add define fields light red and it's a field color 32 as shown in the video and we want to define a value to this color 32 called light red in the constructor so that's c weapon sniper rifle colon colon c weapon sniper rifle and you do that by using curly braces so for example i want this to be uh, 248 in the red, 98 in the green, 0 in the blue and an alpha of 32 since uh, color 32 is RGBA and so that, that's the color that's going to be initialized and the alpha for that color as well and pretty much in the entire sniper rifle weapon code any instance where there's a zoom out for example in holster, a reload maybe if you want that a drop which I believe needs to be added and of course the zoom function uh, you want to add util underscore screen fade and it's going to be p player the light red color 32 whatever you named it uh, I've put 0.2f which is a fade time uh, so it's fairly quick then after this it's a zero which is a hold time we want it to hold forever so just pass through zero to make it last forever and the flags at the end, we want it to fade in and fade purge. So purge replaces all fades that are currently in use, I believe. And fade in, it's kind of backwards because it's not like it's fading in from nothing, but okay. You'd probably expect fade out because it's disappearing, but I don't know, it's just the way the flags work. It's fade in for some reason. So you want to add that specific line that I've outlined and will show for any instance where there's a zoom out. And I believe there's only one instance where there's a zoom in. And for that, you want to have pretty much the same thing, except for the flags. This time we want fade out, fade purge and fade stay out. And that's pretty much all there is to that tutorial fix. To be honest with you, that's all there really is to it. Um, and so for testing purposes, I can show some gameplay right now and yeah, whenever you scope in the sniper rifle, the screen changes color. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, an obvious extension to this would be to actually overlay an image on the screen when you scope in. That unfortunately is a bit more complex and involved and is going to be a whole tutorial on itself, let's face it. So if you want me to do that, I can do it. But uh, for now, I'm not going to go over that. Um, for the binoculars in my Mod Air Exchange retail, I do something like this. But anyway, I'm going to move on to the binoculars now. Uh, the thing is, this is not included with the source code distribution that you can get from Valve. So this has to be pretty much obtained from the Half-Life 2 beta code. And because it's the Half-Life 2 beta code and we're using the 2013 engine, it needs to be fixed up a little bit. Some code that needs to be tweaked. Um, so I'm going to assume you've already done that. And pretty much all we're going to do is in the class definition, the public functions, we're going to add void primary attack void and void secondary attack void. And then in the item post frame function later on, we're going to remove the line that goes zoom, zoom in. And we're going to replace that with primary attack instead. 
and then everything after that until the end of the item post frame function is going to get commented out or deleted. And at the very end, we're going to add base class colon colon item post frame. And then we want to add something like void C weapon binoculars colon colon primary attack. And then say M underscore FL next primary attack equals GP globals arrow cur time plus binoculars zoom rate and then zoom and then in brackets zoom in and then pretty much the same thing for the secondary attack function instead you know just copy and paste but change primary to secondary and then the zoom in to zoom out and you don't need to do anything else because apparently in C weapon stubs HL2 there's already a binoculars class definition there so for some reason that still exists in the 2013 distribution but yeah, for the full effect, you're obviously going to need the materials and models for the binoculars, well, model that's going to be used, a weapon script, and also copy over the binoculars sounds and um, add the binocular script sounds to game sounds weapons.txt. It sounds like a lot of work, but uh, it's pretty much a simple copy paste job. Um, for missing information, for example, you can do that. Um, but the thing is, there is a bug with this, and that is that when you go through a level transition with the binoculars, you cannot zoom in. You have to actually press the zoom out button first before you can zoom in. I have no idea why this happens or how to fix it. And you might be wondering in the item post frame function, why do I keep in the line of code that goes something like if you're pressing attack one, then do primary attack. Usually you want to comment that out of item post frame, but if you do that, then you're not able to scope in whatsoever. And it seems as if even the scoping out doesn't work if you do that. So it's weird. Don't know why that happens, but this fix, it allows you to at least scope in and scope out the binoculars and you have to scope out the binoculars after a level transition to be able to scope in again. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this follow up tutorial. I hope it's helpful. And if you want that tutorial about drawing an image to the screen when scoping in, then that's going to be a whole new, whole different tutorial. And I'll try to outline that to the best of my ability. So thank you for checking out this follow up tutorial. Let me know what you think and like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And peace out and see you for the next video.